So today I'm going to be doing a review on the Laurier Neptune, which is a micro brand. I'm sure many of you have already seen reviews on them or uh, have at least seen them floating around on Instagram or whatnot. And it's because they gained a fair amount of popularity based off their very decent execution of a vintage styling. So let's get into the review. So here we are with the Laurier Neptune and a little about the brand history. I believe they were founded in 2018 and their first model was the Neptune, which I have here. This is actually the generation two Neptune and there was a couple slight updates from their original release model, which I will go into a little bit more later. Uh, other than that, Laurier was a brand founded by a husband and wife couple they were both school teachers and in a sense they just wanted a nice watch that you can have every day use for everyday wear and not be too expensive but also you know still be nice and I think they did that so they wanted to keep a kind of vintage style in their watch design and you can obviously see reference to Tudor Submariners with the the dial and really kind of the shade of blue uh, the no crown guards, kind of like some Rolex big crown models, and even the hands on the dial are like a reverse Aquaterra hand. So, a lot of uh, inspiration from other watches, but I think they've done enough to make it their own, and they also have done it well. So, before I get into the watch too much, I would like to take a look at the packaging really quick because I feel like when a brand does well on the packaging, it should be shown. Uh, it comes shipped to you in this very nice foresty green slash, I don't know, it's, it's, it's definitely a green, but it's got like some bluish in it. Uh, some nice logo on there for Laurier. You open it up, you're presented with Laurier Automatic, and you get a nice brown uh, two slot watch roll. Just nice finished leather, uh, unfinished leather on the inside, which is softer. So, you know, protect the watches. You get your little Neptune, your nice little thank you note, uh, which is, you know, always nice to see a handmade note. Shows the company kind of still actually cares. You know, it's not this big corporate monster. It's a little mom and pop operation, a bunch of collectors who care about their product and care about their customers. So now that's out of the way, we'll take some dimensions on this watch. Bring my calipers in here. If we measure the diameter of the case, we get about 38 and a half millimeters. And I think on their site it's stated at 39, so it's kind of nice to see it's actually even smaller than that. Lug to lug, we're looking at about 48 millimeters. We have a total case thickness of 15.4 millimeters and a lot of that is the domed crystal uh, on their website they claim the case by itself is just 12 millimeters in height we have a 20 millimeter lug width which tapers down to 16 at the buckle or at least near the buckle and yeah that's all for dimensions so to get some specifications out of the way on this watch, this has kind of the typical micro brand Seiko NH35 beating away at 21,600 beats per hour. So, you know, it's sweeping. It's not the smoothest sweep, but it's a sweep. You got 41 hours power reserve, you know, reliable movement. Uh, this model has hacking and hand winding, so that's nice. We have a pretty much super domed plexiglass crystal. So no sapphire here, but they did that on purpose. They wanted that vintage aesthetic. We have BGW9 loom on all the indices and the hands. And in this bracelet, if you can see, not on that side, but on that side, we have screwed in pins, uh, solid end links, very nice milled clasp. And I think that's pretty much it for the general dimensions. So before I get into the watch in general, let me just tell you what the difference is between the generation two, which I have here and the generation one. Uh, they made a few slight updates. Uh, major, the main one being uh, the actual size of the dial. Now the dial in the newer model is actually 2.5 millimeters bigger than the older model. 
and I prefer that a lot because when I saw the older models it literally looked like it was just a small dial sitting in in like a magnified glass almost and I thought it always looked a little off I know it's a kind of a vintage charm kind of thing but I do prefer the execution of the newer style other than that there's slightly larger hands to accommodate the now larger dial uh, there is more applied loom onto the numerals giving it a sort of puffy look as you can see at certain angles and they actually went for an even more drastic dome on this model uh, they increased the dome height by 0.7 millimeters so their reasoning behind that was not only does it create a more uh, continuous line from the bezel to the crystal but it just adds to the vintage aesthetic creates a little more even distortion and they say it kind of harkens back to the idea of a water droplet so you know tying into the sea or maybe even a submarine window they say so it's nice that they have some thought behind it as well as just practicality in a way so moving on to this dial uh, as I said before, it is very much inspired by Tudor Submariners with the typical uh, the typical circular dots for these hours and at the 3, 6, and 9, the triangular ones. I think the whole of the printing is done very well. It's very crisp, very clean. I like that they went for a white coloration instead of a faux vintage because there's enough faux vintage looking things out here and it's nice to have this nice new look in piece and Tudor Submariners they're rising in price so it's good to have something at the more affordable end that can emulate the look again we have this very interesting arrow hour hand you got a nice long almost like a lance uh, minute hand you just have very simple text on the dial Laurier automatic in 200 meters not overcrowding it with text nice seconds track around the outside and honestly that's pretty much it for the dial I think the blue is very nice it comes to life in different lights and goes from a very dark blue to a more medium type blue it definitely does play in the light and change based on whether you're outdoors indoors etc and I think the dial work is very well done and to show you that in more detail let's go on a more macro level. So here we are with a closer look at that dial and as you can see all the printing is done very well, very crisp, not a lot of bleeding or stray edges. There is a slight fuzziness around the edge of the hands, a little bit of like unrefinement or unfinished, you know, detail. but. It is a watch that retails for $400 or $399 to be exact and I think overall for the price the dial is very well done. I think at this level you can also see the nice blue hue that we get and the difference in texture if I, as I move it around darker lighter blue. And if we look at some of these loom pips we can actually see how puffy that actually is. You can see the end of the actual marker. Uh, ends right there <laughs> but the pip is actually a little ends a little bit shorter and is actually just very much stacked on top of the marker so you have a nice application of loom so it does hold the charge for a good amount of time as well as just look nice overall I would say but yeah as we were taking a look at this dial there's not really any defects any misprints any loom out of place. I think it's all very well done, all very crisp and clean, very uniform design, and overall very well executed. So moving on to the case of this watch, I think it's another area where I, this watch kind of shines. It has very nicely finished brushing on the sides, and as you can see a nice polished chamfer that goes all the way from lug to lug. And then uh, straight brushing on the lugs which kind of leads in nicely and visually into the all brushed bracelet and both the machining of the bracelet the overall heft of it the way it sits on the wrist all very comfortable it's definitely a well-made bracelet definitely 
something that was more than just an afterthought. And I love how they have the kind of female lug in there so it would, in theory, sit better on the wrist or at least allow the bracelet to conform to the wrist more rather than flaring out. As you can see, we have an aluminum bezel insert right there. And I think the bezel is one place where the blue comes out the most. Of course, in the sun, the dial does really come out, but even under low light, even in the sun, the bezel kind of contributes even more to the multiple shades of blue that are seen. And overall, just the printing on the bezel, the way it looks, the texturing on the bezel, all very nice. The, as you can see, kind of the bezel is flush with the case so it's not really easy to necessarily to grip from the sides you actually have to you know make sure you get a nice purchase on it uh, it is very very stiff in a way uh, which is kind of good you don't want it to move on accident there is absolutely no back play in this bezel which is pretty great because at four hundred dollars i've seen watches at eight hundred dollars nine hundred a thousand dollars that have way more back play than this so the bezel on this watch, really great tolerance, really great click, and overall, I think it is pretty well executed. Just boom, that lined up, yeah. As you can see, we have a very large crown here. It's a screw down crown. This is a 200 meter water resistant watch. And as I said previously, it's kind of harkening back to Rolex big crown models. But other than that, Laurier was kind of setting out to make a watch that you wouldn't mind wearing every day. And as that type of watch, this crown is very easy to grab because it's so large, it's very easy to wind, very easy to set the time. Uh, really just a pleasure to use. It screws in and out very nicely. And I don't think there's like a lot with this design that they did wrong. You got a nice embossed crown right there solid case back which tying even more into that rolex dna <laughs> and we got nice drilled lugs which i just love because you know you can just always change up the straps so easy the one thing about this bracelet it doesn't have very many micro adjustment holes it literally only has one uh, so that's something i think they might be able to improve on but overall very well done nicely machined. I like how relatively fine the links are so that way it kind of drapes around the wrist really nicely and it's very fluid. So really good execution on this watch. So really quickly let's put the watch on the wrist to see how it wears. Before I take it off completely earlier I was wearing my Vario Art Deco watch. So here we have the Laurier sized on my 6.5 inch wrist as you can see the bracelet really blends into the design really nicely it fits the watch it looks good on the watch for me i wish there was more micro adjustment so i can get a little better of a fit this is kind of as good as it goes and it's a little bit loose for my taste but other than that i think it looks really good i think the watch sits very well i'm glad that they went with the smaller size the 30 8.5 millimeter I believe is what I measured so that sits on my small wrist very well it'll sit on larger wrists well it'll look classier on larger wrists we still have a very decent lug to lug length so overall I think it still would look proportional on many many wrist sizes uh, one thing to note is that if I can get it properly the watch is relatively slab sided so it doesn't really conform to the wrist very much. It very much just sits on top. But that's only a minor gripe. And overall, I think it does really wear very nicely. And once you get it on other straps, of course, it can sit kind of closer to the wrist and conform a little better. So as we take a look at the loom on this watch, uh, I think they've done a very good job on it. As I said, they applied it, the BGW9, thicker than they did on the previous model generation. So you can really tell everything is super bright. What I particularly like about this watch is that every pretty much loom surface is basically evenly lit. Sometimes you'll get watches where the hands are very much brighter than the, uh, than the indices and that 
kind of stands out to me is it's a little too much and I think it's applied very evenly here very nicely here uh, it's picking up very blue on my camera but it is actually more of like a greenish teal color uh, it is a very nice color loom I like it we have the nice pip at the 12 for orientation purposes and if I just charge it back up real quick and do the normal comparison to my Snoopy watch, you can see that the colors are actually pretty much the exact same. The brightness is almost the exact same. Of course, the Timex has a greater area, but overall, the boom is very, very well done on this fairly affordable watch. and. I think that's very much a plus for this watch. So moving on to my final thoughts for the watch, I wanted to change up the bracelet because honestly, I have not been wearing it on the bracelet. I've been wearing it on this uh, Vario branded elastic NATO strap. Super comfortable. I think the blue matches really well. And I just like how it sits on the wrist when it's on this strap. So some closing thoughts on this watch. Uh, for my pros, I really like the coloration on this watch. Uh, I just think blue is a really good color for watches in general and the blue that they executed here is just done very nicely. And I like the nice monochrom monochromaticity that they have with the blue and the white. No other colors in there, no pop of color. It's just very nice and as you can pair it with nice blue and white straps like I have on it right now. Uh, I very much appreciate them doing this in a smaller size. I would love that they didn't do a 40, they didn't do a 42 millimeter. They did kind of go for the slightly more vintage leaning style. They, it's in a 38.5 millimeter case. It's harder to find dive watches that are more midsize like that. And I think it's not only executed well, but it fits well on smaller wrists and it would fit just as well on larger ones. Uh, if I didn't, I didn't mention it earlier, but the bracelet is actually able to be sized to fit up to an eight inch wrist. So it is made for those with larger wrists. Uh, another thing I really like is that they didn't put a date on this watch. I think a date, even if it would have been at six o'clock, would have ruined the aesthetic. It would have ruined the balance and the symmetry. And I just appreciate that they left that out and stayed more true to just the design of the watch. And overall, I just think it's a very clean looking watch, a very good looking watch, and very good value for the price that it's at. So some small cons that I have with this watch is the numbers on the bezel. I feel like they are slightly too small or the, the um, print is too thin. Uh, something about it is just not very, it's very understated, it's very almost not there. It's not as functional as it could be, I think, if it was a thicker print or a larger numeral. Uh, other than that, I kind of don't love how flat the watch case wears. I mean, it's very true of other watches of this type, other Submariner type watches, but I think if they can somehow alter the ergonomics of the watch, it would be for the benefit, of course. I do also appreciate the drilled lugs because who doesn't love easily changing straps? Also, for some people, the plexiglass crystal might be a con. Uh, they've already addressed that, hey, was the plexiglass, plexiglass crystal a cost-cutting measure for, instead of going for sapphire? And they said, no, it's actually more expensive for them to have gone with the plexiglass because it would it need tighter tolerances to ensure the 200 meter water resistance. So they really did the plexiglass because it smudges less, it has a beautiful dome to it. It's more of a vintage vibe. It doesn't shatter if you drop it. So it has a practicality to it. And if you get scratches on it, you can always use some poly wash and get that right off. Overall, final thoughts is I really like the watch. It is a good way to get into that Tudor Submariner type vibe for a lot cheaper. It, is a great design to be able to have under at the sub $500 price point. I think the movement that they're offering, the quality of the bracelet, the case construction, the overall tolerances in the crown and the finishing and the screws in the bracelet. I think it's all really 
a steal for the price you're getting it at. And you get a useful two watch travel pouch case with it. And that's nice than just some kind of throwaway packaging that you'll enjoy the day you open it, but always put it on a shelf every day afterwards. So overall, I would highly recommend this watch. I think it's very well done. Uh, I love the blue coloration on it. They also come in a black and I feel like there's one more colorway, but I cannot think of it. Uh, but yeah, definitely also comes in black. And the only thing is sometimes they're a little hard to get. They only kind of like stock them in short intervals. So you'll they'll be on the site. They'll be there for like a week maybe, and then they'll be out of stock for like a month. So it's worth the wait. Uh, it's very fast shipping once you actually do order the watch. So if you've been on the fence about getting a Laurier, I would say jump in for it. It's a great design. It's a very usable watch. You got 200, waters, 200 meters of water resistance. So you can always take it with you and do anything with it. And overall, I think you really can't go wrong. Thanks for watching.